We've got a couple hundred yards to float down, and I've already got them. And that is exactly why we don't want to float too far. Dance over. Let's go find another one. Morning, everybody. Drew and I, actually, the whole crew's out here on a small tributary in the state of Georgia. And we are in our new canoes floating down the river. Turkey calling, shoal bass fishing, spot fishing. And I'm going to tell you right now, just in the first 500 yards, this is absolute paradise. Drew and I are just in awe of what we're looking at and what God creates here. It's unreal. Um, we're hoping we, we've got a pretty good stretch to run right here, several miles. And we're Drew and I are just going to float. The boys are back here fishing behind us. We're just going to float down the river. I'm going to call a good bit, uh, throw some real loud calls out, uh, some fly down cackles, some cutting of excited hen, and I'm trying to just strike a bird. Um, we're just going to start floating right now and see what happens. And maybe, just maybe it'll happen. This is not my first time on this river. So I've, I've been hunting rivers since a kid, literally in a John boat. So what I've done is I've gone on my own X map and I don't want to pull it out right now because I'm actually getting everything wet. But on my own X, I've marked certain branches or hardwood bottoms or creek tributaries that come off of this main river. And a lot of times that's where the birds are roost at. So I've marked them down through here. Um, and the goal is to get to them and what I'll do is the banks are 10 or 12, even 15, shoot, maybe, yeah, 15 feet high. You can't hear real good down in the river, so we're, we're going to have to pull the kayaks up to the bank, tie up, run up on top of the bank, and I'll call, and I'll be really aggressive because I'm trying to strike one. I'm not going to sit there, and then if I don't hear him, I'm back in the canoe, back down the river. So right now that's kind of what we're, what we're tackling. with him a little bit here and just see what he does if he starts coming hard then we'll go ahead and set up on the other side and see if he'll pitch cross but chances are very slim for that he's in the same spot every time where he's at he's in that drain just like i was telling you they get in these hardwood drains that run right off the creek Right off the river, he's right on the edge of it. He's literally in this drain right here while we're coming by. I just need him on this side. He's pretty damn close. Let's try. Can it? Yeah, let's try. We're gonna, we're gonna try to pull him across the river. He keeps coming, so he's gonna be at the river bank in just a minute. We're gonna hurry up and get out. There he goes right there. So I'm just trying to get him to pitch across the river. If he pitches across it, as soon as his feet hit the ground, boom, I can kill him. That's what the goal is right now.
famous Benelli click. Oh, he's going sometime. Absolutely perfect. Called that bird across the river. And Benelli is known for if the chamber gets bumped just like that when you're climbing up the bank like this, it doesn't seat properly. And that's exactly what just happened. I tried to shut one in there and shoot him in the butt right before he went across the river. He was too far. I tried to just get a pellet in his head at like 60 yards like a dummy. But it's turkey hunting right there. I mean, you see this right here? So if, you, if your shell's up in the chamber right here, there's a little latch right here. And if that, this thing just, these Benelli's bump real easy. Now it won't shoot. And this is what happened. So the shell's in there, but it's turned down. So to get it right, you gotta do that. And during the crawl and the move and the excitement and everything, I mean, you don't, you don't think about everything. And I didn't think about checking that out of all things. You can tell I'm not real happy right now. All right, dance over. Let's go find another one. It's like missing like 180 inch deer at like 15 yards. I wouldn't take it that far. Dude, to me. It breaks my heart, man. I live for this stuff and that just really hurts me. Hurts my feelers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be venting about this for the next, how many miles we got left? Seven? Six? I don't know. <laughs> Probably seven. I'm sorry. I'm not, I'm just, I can just, right now I'm visioning a dead long beard hanging over the front of my new canoe right here. And it's just, he's not there. I keep looking. He's not there. You need to get your head back in the game, Jay. y'all drew and i are back we got the kayaks back in the water and this time we are using them for a little bit different purpose we've been floating rivers and creeks and stuff like that with a lot of good flowing water well we have a friend of ours that has a giant swamp that's flooded and the only way to get to high ground where these turkeys are is to use a boat this is what we've done we've driven into this big road here all the way around now we've gotten like a mile down in here now what we have here starting about right here where we are about two or three hundred yards up we have some big food plots that we know exist but nobody has been able to hunt them because of all the rain we're getting so we've got kayaks and we're about to slip up this road right here and we're going to start calling as soon as we get to this dry ground and try to strike a bird up and see if we can make it happen out of the kayak Everything is so flooded, the birds have to be concentrated on the only dry ground here and we know exactly where that is, so we're closing in on it now. So hopefully they'll, they'll be there like they're supposed to be.
sit in. He'd probably have the gobbler decoy. He would have seen that white head. He probably would have gone. But he just gobbled again. And we're just going to let him go on around us. Go up the roost. It's getting late in the evening. He'll be up in the tree in 20 minutes. We can come back in the morning, slip back in in the kayaks, back to the same spot. He's in. Should be a good setup. It's going to be early, though, right off the limb. just paddle back in here it's pretty early it's like uh, I don't know 545 something like that um, we yesterday afternoon when we after we parked and got out after we heard him he ended up moving another two or three hundred yards after we called him up so we've got about a half a mile walk but this is as close as we can get but uh, without these never would have got right here so let's go make it happen Hit a stopping point. We're about halfway in, and what was high dry ground yesterday is now flooded, probably waist deep, and now we don't know what to do. He's right over that water right out there. It's a big beaver pond, just like this. Slow, just like this. He's right over that water. So you got water, water, and water across the road. He's either got the pitch down right here or over there. That's the only two places he's got. So, he's still in the tree because the swamp that he's under flooded last night. So, where he flew up from dry ground is all wet now. So, we're waiting on him to either pitch from tree to tree to get down or he's going to sail a long, long way. And our setup's kind of janked up because he could come from 12 o'clock or he could come from dead and out of lock. He's still, he's still in the tree. Huh? He's on the ground. No, he's not. He's another 80 yards in there. He's roosting over so much water, he can't see dry ground. So he's just gonna sit up there all day, I guess. I don't know. I mean, not all day. Eventually, he'll just limb hop until he sees dry ground, you know, pitch down. But you hate to waste a good morning when they're doing this, so. Everybody. Drew and I are back at it again. It's May 7th, and believe it or not, it is 41 degrees. We're on the river again, and um, a crisp, clean morning like this, just cool, a cool snap can be detrimental in killing a turkey. Um, they love to gobble 
and strut and show their stuff off when it's cool like this. We've got a couple hundred yards to float down, uh, and I've already got them. There you go. And that is exactly why we don't want to float too far. I don't want to run any more turkeys out of the trees. We got about 200 yards, and I've got a spot marked on on X that we're going to get out, slip up on this bank, and ease up on this high point and get going. So we'll see what we can do. got where I think the birds are going to be the most. Um, I don't know. I don't know exactly, but it's always good to start on high ground, so that's what we're going to do. We just parked the uh, new canoes right here, and um, we spooked the hen out of the tree about 150 yards back. It's a good sign. So we'll slide up the bank right here, go up to the top, and then um, see if we can get to where we can hear. Just wait till the sun comes up, starts beating on it a little bit. We haven't heard anything yet. But they love to work out to a clear cut once that sun starts popping. So we're gonna camp out right here for just a little bit and see what happens, hopefully. We'll hear one somewhere. Did you think he missed? <laughs> I, well, no, because I had it right on his head when I usually when I pull the trigger. I mean, I, I just feel that much confident. His head was up. I put the bead on his head, pulled the dude. I know you couldn't get it. I could see. I could barely see his head. He was so spooked. I mean, there was no way he was coming. But I was like, you know what? It's May seventh. May seventh, right? Yeah, it's May seventh, and season's about to be done. I've only got a few days before I leave to Wisconsin. I've got another spook bird. Drew and I have had terrible luck. And uh, I got to thinking when I crawled up to the decoy, I showed it to him and he saw it. 
and he came just a little bit and that was I'm just looking at it well over 40 yards that's the, the we'll step it off that's gonna push 50 yards pretty hard he's right here he was that far when he shot yeah I wasn't waiting anymore man I'm done <laughs> Yeah, I got a jet up, but he ain't looking too good. It's a Jake. Is it really? <laughs> I just killed a Jake. Holy cow. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> I haven't killed a Jake in probably 20 years. Well, I'll take that back. I've had a few accidents over the years, but I have just had a royal accident. <laughs> this bird sounded like a big bird. He was spitting and drumming over here. I didn't think anything about it. it the, the foliage is so thick, you can't see their bodies good. And I, I watched him gobble a couple times. He raised his head. He was like 50 yards, and I was like, you know, it's going to be now or never. So, boom, put him down. Walk up here and it is a Jake. Thankful for the bird though. That's all it is to it. Very thankful. This whole season and burning my third tag on a Jake. <laughs> oh man. What have I done? I have killed very few Jakes in my life, but I have killed some and I've made some mistakes. And this morning is one of those. I made a mistake. Look, I mean, this sucker's got a huge head on him. And, you know, when you didn't see anything with that head, with that the goblin that he had, it wasn't a half gobble, it was a pretty strong gobble. I didn't even question it. So, I know most guys won't, wouldn't show this or tell this, but I made a mistake. I killed a Jake. He'll eat just as good as a long beard, there's no doubt about it. Um, I'm tickled to death to be tagged out. Thanking the Lord for that so I can spend some some family time with my kids and my wife before I head to Wisconsin and I'll try to get it done up here but we still got to float back down the river to get to where we're going to take you out at and uh, just real thankful to have this done this morning the old super jake bird got some beard rot I'll just say I caught I, I thinned him out because he was I could see his beard was rotten so I decided to go ahead and take him out to herd <laughs> Wish I could say that. That was a cold bird. That was a cold bird. <laughs> oh man, I can't believe it. And I 